Yes, yes, yes. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Mike Barker. Thank you so much for tuning in once again to these crazy videos. On today's episode though, we're gonna build a custom adapter for my motorcycle lift. Why are we doing that? Well, I'll show you why. The Mac 4 in one pipe that I put onto this bike doesn't clear the center stand. Big time, big time pain. The center stand is so useful. If you just wanna have the ease of accessibility for doing chain maintenance, oil filter changes, any of that stuff, keep your center stand. This pipe doesn't work with it. Maybe that's a reason to upgrade to a different pipe down the road. So as you can see, by deleting the center stand, I caused myself some headache. All in the name of a four into one pipe. Oh, whatever. Regardless, we're gonna make this work. We're gonna make it awesome. So what we're gonna do is somehow come in and pick up on the frame on both sides, but at the same time, the jack is gonna have to come underneath and clear the exhaust. Before things get too crazy here, we're gonna need some tools in order to do the layout for what we wanna build. No, too soon. First off, measuring tape. A pencil, of course. Maybe something to both write on and to use to mock up. Trees, dead trees. Don't take it too seriously. These trees have been dead and well used for a really long time. They aren't really the trees that I want though. Now my trees in the house, notepad, cornbread too. Mm, tasty. I measured four inches of clearance from the bike frame to the top of my motorcycle lift. So therefore I planned for three and three quarter inches of clearance. But that was kind of silly though, because a standard two x four measures three and a half inches, so why not use that? So I did. Hitting the kickstand right here. Okay, so here's what I'm kind of thinking. So originally, I was gonna do something like this. It was gonna be like a brace that basically would straddle either side underneath the bike. This part would come up and touch the frame. This part would rest on the jack. Hmm. I think it's a lot easier than this though. What I think I'm gonna to try to do from the top down here is this. This is gonna be either a four x four or two four x fours screwed together. This will be underneath the right side of the frame. And on the other side, the frame is gonna kind of have to rest on a slightly angled similar setup. So again, this will either be a four x four or two two x fours screwed together, whatever I happen to have up in my stash of wood. Let's draw it like two two by fours anyway. And down here though, I'm gonna wanna cut the angle on this because what I wanna have happen is I don't want this to be able to rock and move away. I don't think it would. I think two two by fours would be pretty sturdy, but for safety's sake, I wanna tie them together somehow. So after they're positioned underneath the bike on the jack, then something is gonna connect them at the front and the back. Well, maybe not. Or I could even just simply put a button here, swings together. This is super crude. Catch this button right here, and maybe that would be secure enough. It's time to get some materials down. So for everyone out there who's watching this, you're probably in the same situation that I am. You've got one garage, one workspace, you don't have a separate wood shop, a separate welding shop, a separate shop for, I don't know, doing oil paintings or playing Parcheesi or whatever the hell you do. I've got to work inside. I really don't want to get Jay's fancy project cafe racer bike covered in sawdust. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover everything that I care about in the shop right now before I get to my woodwork. There you go, buddy. This old girl should have had its car cover on months ago. I've also got to push it back because the table saw is jammed up here in front of it. So true story, I used to keep this car in my grandmother's barn in the wintertime. 
Uh, and one year, a little furry friend decided to eat a bunch of holes in my nice car cover. I couldn't have put this saw in a worse possible place. Oh. So with our 16 degree bevel cut, now it's time to take that piece of four x four that I hauled down, cut it so that its length is flush to either end of this section. And with this piece, I'm gonna take some wood glue, smear it in between here, jam some screws through it everywhere, and move on to the next step. Oh yeah, a little PL. Really probably overkill, but this was just gonna go to waste anyway, so might as well use it. Go. Now, like I said, this is not rocket surgery here, okay? I'm sure anybody who's a carpenter out there is probably looking at this going, oh my God, what is he doing? Really, I just need this to be close so that it fits under the bike and buttons up like I need it to. All right, this side looks pretty good. Now, the other side's a different story though. Turn my light on for you guys. On this side, the exhaust pipe exits quite far at the back there, which I actually have to somehow get underneath of the exhaust pipe. So what do we do here? Well, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a piece of half inch plywood on the bottom. That'll get down underneath the end of the exhaust pipe. And then I'll build that up with a two by four and then another piece of half inch to make an equal connection, an equal height connection with the frame on this side. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a two by four here along with another piece of strapping. Ideally, I still want this two by four to sit over the jack here so that the weight is still properly on the jack. If we cut it too short in the middle here, we could bow this and that would not end well. Let's try 12 inches. I think I'm actually gonna hold these two pieces of wood about three quarters of an inch strong out away from this board. The weight of the edges is still out over the actual legs of the jack, but I need this little bit of clearance for the pipes inside here. Had to cut an angle back here in order to still clear this pipe. This is almost like playing with Lego. Really big kid Lego. Just keeping an eye on it all, making sure that it clears everything here. Okay, that's actually looking pretty sturdy right now. The front wheel stone is still not off the ground though, so carefully I'm just gonna check to see how this is working. Ah, front wheel's free now. I'm gonna try to move these blocks just back here a little further so that they're over top of this foot. A little more of this arm of the jack. But otherwise, I think this is gonna work. Just to loosely mark the position that I wanna have those boards in when they go on this baseboard. I'm gonna go ahead and fasten these together with screws only first, and then test it under the bike again. But I'm gonna fast forward through all this so I don't bore you guys. That is gonna work great. A couple of marks for the position of these boards so that I know roughly where they should be when I go to use this again. Sit it back down. Perfect. All right, now, take this, which I've labeled. One, two. We'll label these blocks to match them, obviously. And two. Transfer some marks here. I've purposely put just one screw in 
to keep these kind of hinged for now. Oh, keep one of them hinged, there we go. So, let's see how this works. Okay, not gonna lie guys, this is pretty rad. Got started front and back, slide it in. This board butts right up against the edge of my jack. Just have to kind of look down to make sure nothing's rubbing against the pipes or anything. Looks good. And on the other side, kind of the same thing. With this tight up against the jack, just kind of slide this piece in place. Would you look at that? I mean, would you look at it? And now for the moment of truth. Will it lift? Ha! That doesn't suck. That's surprisingly stable too. I mean, you don't want to get too crazy with it, but uh, damn, that's gonna work. Yes, sir, yes, yes. There you go. So for the cost of some scrap lumber that I had hanging around anyway, maybe a dozen screws and a little bit of PL premium, I built a little cradle so that I can lift the bike up off the ground without the center stand. Keep in mind, I'm still a huge fan of the center stand. If I could have kept it, I would have. That being said, building stuff is always fun, right? Guys, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up down there. It helps expose more people to what I'm all about, what this channel is trying to do. Thank you once again for tuning in though. I'm, oh, did I get that all dirty? I am totally jazzed about the number of people who have come on board in the last month or so. It's kind of crazy, crazy awesome. Thanks for tuning in guys. I will see you all in the next video. Thank goodness we built a lift so we can work on the front end now.